Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from the Balkans here in Europe. Hi, Alex. Hi, Shaikh. Hi, Joel. Just want Shaikh. Nice to see people in the class. Hi, Ashraf. Good to see our members here as well. In this class, we are looking at speaking part three. We're going to talk about how to pick up those extra band scores. Hi, Carolina. Wave back at you. Hi, Lydia. I've been doing fantastic. Thank you. Uh, this part three is continuing from our part two uh, cue card that we just covered 30 minutes ago. So for those of you who saw that class, that's fantastic. Make sure to remember to connect information to part two. And again, that's why you need to do really well in part two is so you can make connections for your part three answers. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there, join our premium package, uh, use the code R4TYJ and you'll get a 20% discount on checkout. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. Again, on both of these websites, we have loads and loads of great materials for you. Uh, this is our academic website here. Uh, this is our general IELTS website here. You can click those big red buttons to join the premium package. And since this is a speaking class, I will show you where you can practice your speaking with other students uh, for free. So let me just quickly show you that. Um, I'm going to jump into our My Student account here at the top. And now I'm in my My Student account. And in my My Student account, um, you can access this for free if you're using the demo version of the course. You see this uh, student partner speaking button. You can click on that um, and then uh, accept the terms and once you do that you're going to be in the uh, user interface and in the user interface you will find other IELTS students who are looking to practice their speaking uh, just like with WhatsApp or with uh, Skype so here we can see there's Stefan that's in here there's Mert that's in here Parth there's usually several students Lydia Mohammed uh, Kiran. So there's definitely um, students hanging out in here waiting for others to join in, uh, connect with them, and then practice their uh, speaking. So you can do that. And of course, there's speaking questions that you can access by clicking on these topics as well. So uh, make sure to check that out. Okay. All right. And that's free for you to use. So you can do that for free. Uh, the way to get a free account to, without getting access to all of the materials is to click the green button. And when you click that green button, you can access the speaking with other students, okay? There's no strings attached. That's absolutely for you to use for free. Shaikh says, that's me. I'm using it. I'm there. All right, Shaikh. Cool. Okay, everyone. Uh, so that's a little preamble uh, today. We will have this speaking part three class and then live classes continue on Wednesdays. Wednesday to Saturday are the live classes. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. Um, so this is a speaking class. So please make sure to speak, repeat as much as possible. Okay. Speak and repeat what you hear me say. Uh, make sure to pay attention to corrections in the chat as well. Uh, let's get right into it. Let's just warm up. Let's answer a couple of these questions. So uh, part two was about a place that is good to meet people. Okay, so keep that in mind. So part two was a place that's good to meet people. And our answer there was the gym. Okay, so keep that in mind when we're answering these, um, these questions. Here we go, students. So again, the examiner says, okay, that's the end of part two. Uh, now we will continue with part three. For part three, 
I will ask you more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, let's talk about some social places and social practices. Okay. First question. Uh, what are common places where people can socialize with others? Okay. So you only hear that first question. What are common places where people can socialize with others? Uh, Beckchen says, in my opinion, the most popular places where individuals can converse with each other are restaurants, public parks, and gyms. As I just mentioned, as people mostly go there with their friends and family members um, to meet with others. Yeah, very good, Beck John. Okay, let's see some other answers. And of course, uh, remember students in part two where we came up with two or three ideas for a part two answer? Another reason that that's really good to do in the one minute is because it will become useful uh, for your part three. So keep that in mind, okay? Uh, keep this little tip in your head. So another reason to come up with uh, two to three possible answers for uh, part two cue card um, is those will be useful for part three. Okay, keep that in mind. Ooh, all right. Some more answers coming up. Let's uh, have a look. Just Paul Singh says, well, there are a lot of places where people meet each other, like fairs, religious places, marriages, birthday parties, and many more. Uh, just Paul, not bad, but remember that uh, a marriage and a birthday party is not a place. It's an event, okay? So you have to speak really clearly uh, in your IELTS speaking, you have to speak professionally and accurately. Okay, we tend to make a lot of mistakes in our everyday conversation, and you have to practice not making those mistakes in the IELTS exam. Okay, Seni Sarani says uh, these days common places that are used for people to hang out are social media like Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, virtual places are okay, Seni. I definitely would broaden my scope to physical places as well, at least mentioning uh, coffee shops, schools, uh, okay? Nigeman says there are several destinations where people can meet new faces like at uh, university, restaurants, parks, but the best place that I said earlier is the fitness center like Gold's Gym. Very good, Nigeman, very good, An. A uh, nice connection there, okay? Lydia says foreign language class at uh, foreign language institutions is one of the most common places and has a major impact where people can communicate with each other from different nationalities. Okay, Lydia, that's good. Maybe throw in an example, Lydia, in that case, because you're being quite specific. Now, uh, students, when you see the word places, you definitely want to mention at least a few places, okay? So not just one. So even though, Lydia, foreign language institutions is one type of place, I highly recommend uh, throwing in at least a couple more, okay? I've said this before, I'm gonna make a note of it. So when the question is asking a plural, uh, make sure to list at least a few different places, like two or three minimum, okay? So here we go, here's my answer. Um, there are several places, both online and in the real world where people can converse with one another about a variety of topics um, <clears throat> for the virtual world. Uh, these places include 
Facebook and forums and in the real world they are cafes schools and as I had just mentioned the local gym all right so uh, there's my answer uh, repeat after me so here we go what are some places where people can socialize with others there are several places both online and in the real world where people can converse with one another about a variety of topics for the virtual world these places include Facebooks and Facebook and forums and in reality they are cafe schools and as I had just mentioned the local gym okay so several places notice the use of both and so it's okay if you think about you know the virtual realm um, but definitely think about the real world as well so physical locations okay and then comes the follow-up question which of these uh, is the best to meet a new friend okay which of these is the best to meet a new friend give me a nice full sentence answer for this so of course you have these follow-up questions in part three that are aiming to get more detail more language more comprehension from you and I saw my camera just fell asleep there so I'll get you back okay uh, so if nothing comes to mind right away it's okay to buy time by saying mm, that's a little bit tricky I have to think about that for a minute and then think about it for a couple seconds and then come up with your answer it doesn't have to be the perfect answer it just has to be clear and comprehensible okay so let's see what you come up with uh, Muskan Nisha says I think uh, there are some places which are really the best for meeting a new friend like uh, academies where students study together gyms where people do exercise together and some parks and cafes um, okay Muskan I it's not a bad answer but I think you're uh, jumping around to too many places it's best to focus on just one and explain it really clearly so if you believe that university is a great place to meet new friends then that's great that's a good answer uh, go into detail so you said um, um, where they study together yeah and then explain that give an example so uh, when you have a couple of students in the same biology major and they're working on projects together they're bound to get to know each other intimately and uh, have a long-lasting friendship okay so get into it Muskan give detail all right Alex Joseph says I think a restaurant is the most suitable place to meet a fresh face as people are probably happy with their favorite food um, Alex you're kind of off topic there uh, we're not talking about meeting a fresh face uh, we're talking about meeting a new friend so the subject here is the friend uh, not just a fresh face so you're not going to get points uh, for that answer at least not as many as you could your answers have to be specific okay Lehman Pashali says I think gyms and recreational places are um, great to make new friends because there people have a lot in common which they can discuss okay Lehman nice answer uh, Lehman don't use the word you you will have okay uh, students do not use you in your speaking answers this is a very common uh, mistake it's common practice in everyday language to use you but it's not good practice in professional or exam situations so really important tip pay attention to this as much as possible when you're practicing for your speaking interview and also for your professional or academic speech okay do not use the word you 
in your speaking responses. Okay, I'll tell you why. So uh, when people use you, they often do this incorrectly as they are not actually talking about their listener. Also, when candidates use you, they often get into repetition and a lower level of communication. Okay? So once more, I know that it's common to use the word you in every language in everyday communication because we try to grab and hold the attention of our listener by saying you, 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 you. Oh, really? You're talking about me. Everything is about me. Uh, great. But really, it's not. Uh, so when you use you, you're avoiding uh, very important nouns and you're restricting your communication. So don't do that. Okay, don't use you. Right? A lot of people do it and it's not good practice. Okay, so <clears throat> I think the best place... Or instead of best, say number one place to meet a new friend is in university. As students, uh, especially in the same majors, have common interests or cohorts and cohorts and therefore have much in common which they can talk about in order to build a long uh, term friendship. I have at least half a dozen friends from my university days. Okay. All right. So that was a good answer. I'm using a little bit of what some of you said there. And uh, notice a few important points. So I'm answering, I'm giving an explanation, and I'm giving a smooth example. You're always thinking about <clears throat> these three elements. So answer, explain, example, okay? Make it clear. Repeat after me. Which of these is the best place to meet a new friend? I think the number one place to meet a new friend is in university. As students, especially in the same majors, have common interests, are cohorts, and therefore have much in common, which they can talk about in order to build a long-term friendship. I have at least half a dozen friends from my university days. Okay, uh, much in common is a nice expression. Uh, cohort means people of the same age group. So people who are uh, the same age as you, they are considered your cohorts, they're cohorts, okay? So again, answer, explain, example. And of course, notice that nice little uh, half a dozen. It's again, an, um, uh, expression at the same time as an expression, it's also quantitative language. So it means at least six good friends from university. Okay, uh, focusing on one, which of these is the best to meet a new friend? So focusing on one place. Okay, Catherine Pereira says, as I mentioned before, parks can be a nice place to meet up. I just hang out with my friends uh, near a park known as Sally Park. Okay, uh, Catherine, it sounds like you're talking about where is a good place to meet with your friends, but here it's where is the best to meet a new friend. Okay, this means like to get a new friend, okay, in this question, right? So make sure the question is clear. If you answer off topic, you're losing marks, okay? If you understood this question differently, like where is the best place to meet up, 
with a new friend. That might be arguable, but again, you have to say that very clearly. So whenever I meet with a new friend, I'd like to go to a restaurant with them where there is a neutral uh, space uh, where we have some food, we're calm, we can focus on conversation. Okay, that would be okay too and acceptable. You have to be very clear. All right, Kyber says socializing face to face has become rare over the last few decades due to the advancement of technology. Uh, such as devices and smartphones. I'm not sure which question you're answering there, Kyber, but it's definitely not this one. Uh, I think it's the next one. You're jumping ahead. Uh, try not to jump ahead, students. Try to uh, kind of keep with it. I'll get to different responses at different times. So here is the next question that Kyber was already answering. Okay, and the question is, has socializing face-to-face -face become more or less common than in the past and why? Now you can give me a nice answer for that one. Okay. All right. Just Ball says, I think there is a huge decline uh, from the past face-to-face -face conversation uh, due to the development of technology. People have busy schedules and they meet on technical platforms. Uh, just Paul, one important correction. Um, this is present perfect. Has socializing face to face become more or less common than in the past? Uh, has become. So you want to use present perfect in your answer. Okay. Again, this is something that in everyday conversation, we don't necessarily pay attention to. But on the IELTS exam, in order to get your grammatical range marks full, um, you have to pay attention to reflecting the various types of grammar presented in the questions. Okay. Uh, Muskan says, in my opinion, socializing face to face has become less common than in the past because of busy schedules. And on the other hand, technology helps people uh, to meet with our friends. Um, yeah, I would say in addition, Muskan, it's not quite a contrast. The uh, technology helping us uh, is more of an addition rather than contrast. Okay. All right. Carolina says, I think one of the biggest changes for this is the internet. A couple of decades ago, people almost always met face to face. However, these days, many people will meet online through social media. Yeah, and Carolina, just a little bit of an adjustment and you can make that into a present perfect. So I think one of the biggest changes has been the internet, okay? Has been, just throw has been in there, Carolina, and you're showing present perfect to the examiner and they can give you a little bit more on your grammar range points, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's not enough to just use present perfect once in your speaking. You need to get that in there a couple of times at least. Okay, so this is my next tip here, students, is um, you must pay attention to reflect the grammar of questions such as present perfect, continuous, also known as progressive, or conditional. in order to increase your score for what's called grammatical range. Okay, that's actually one of the criteria that they're marking you on, okay? Uh, this is a bit different than in real life where we do not necessarily do this. Okay, so the IELTS interview is not the same as a real life conversation, even though people will have you believe that. Even some teachers and examiners will have you believe that, but it's not true. Okay, um, it's misleading. In the IELTS, you have to be a better communicator uh, than in uh, your everyday conversations, and you have to avoid. Uh, the common practices that we have in everyday conversation where we say you in a lot of our answers where we don't need to 
or we don't really care about the grammar. We're just naturally using whatever comes to mind. In the IELTS, you have to care about your grammar, okay? So really important, okay? So, yes, I think, uh, well, I certainly would argue that in-person communication has become much less frequent than a couple decades prior, mostly due to the advancement of technology. People these days are either preoccupied by the distractions of digital media on their phones, tablets, and computers, and even when they do get into a discussion, it is often through virtual rather than physical means using Skype or WhatsApp, to name a couple. Okay. All right, so there's my answer. Uh, again, detail, answer, explanation, all right? Uh, obviously, lots of grammar, grammatical range. Um, I'm pushing you to be a higher level, to use better English. So if you're catching some new words here, fantastic, write them down, okay? Uh, here we go, one more time, the question. Has socializing face-to-face -face become more or less common than in the past? Why? Well, certainly I would argue that in-person communication has become much less frequent than a couple of decades prior, mostly due to the advancement of technology. People these days are either preoccupied by the distraction of digital media on their phones, tablets, computers, and even when they do get into discussion, it is often through virtual rather than physical means using Skype or WhatsApp. Uh, and I would probably change that to or. Makes a little bit sense. Either or. Okay. All right. Uh, Turk Berry says, uh, I strongly believe that face-to-face -face interactions have been reduced. Uh, as much of it has been replaced with the advancement of technology. And due to the increasing competition in the commercial world has forced um, the global reach. Okay, Turk. I think the end, you're kind of getting lost there, but one point I really like, Turk, about your answer is you're showing the present perfect twice. So Turk says, face-to-face -face interactions have been reduced and have been replaced by technology. Um, it's very good strategy, Turk, and I've said this in previous classes, that uh, practice not just reflecting the grammar once, but even twice so that your examiner, even if they miss by some chance, they usually don't, but by some chance, if they miss your first present perfect, the second present perfect, they're like, did, did this candidate just use present perfect twice? That's great. Okay. So, all right. Uh, here we go with a follow-up question. What can society do to encourage young people to socialize with each other face to face. Give me uh, a nice answer for that one. Okay. All right. Roshni Kunte says, hmm, communities um, through social events such as dance, competitive programs for youngsters can help them to socialize more as well as spreading awareness about the value 
of relationships with people in the neighborhood. Very good, Roshni. I like it. I really like the start of uh, your answer. Yeah, so organizing community events, and then you give a couple of nice examples of that. That's fantastic. Good job, Roshni. Good job. Okay. All right. Bekjan says, society can come up with new activities such as cleaning around the neighborhood at least once a week so that people can have conversation with each other while benefiting their surroundings. Another one is to construct public facilities such as uh, benches where individuals can sit and converse with one another. Very good, Bekjan. Yeah, don't forget about the gym as well, students. So going to the gym building gyms, making them free uh, for the public to encourage fitness and interaction, interpersonal communication. Uh, Lydia says virtual interactions have decreased dramatically through social media's lack of emotion. It's rare to emerge in rear dispositions and shapes. Mm, Lydia, I'm not sure where you're going with that. So careful, okay. Uh, don't overcomplicate. It's good to test your English in these live classes for sure, but in the official exam, be really careful uh, with clarity and accuracy. Okay. All right. Pachu Yadav says society can do much to encourage young people to socialize with each other by establishing recreation centers, uh, arranging cleanup campaigns, and other activities that bring them together for a common goal. Uh, moreover, they can be involved in educational activities about the awareness of uh, antisocial activities like uh, video games. Okay, yeah, very nice answer. I gave a little bit more there, Pachu, but it was great. Okay, Niaish Iman says, I think they uh, should be tied up with jobs to know about the responsibilities and to broaden their horizons. One way to encourage them is through schools and colleges. Niash, uh, you have the right direction. Add some more clarity, okay? Why are you saying that? So what's the logic behind what you're saying? It's unclear from that, all right? Datar Singh says societies can organize various cultural meets like dance and song uh, in public parks, building gyms where people can interact with each other while staying healthy. Yeah, very good, Datar. I added a bit more to what you wrote there to make it a little bit better. Okay. Arza says, to encourage young people to interact with each other in person, the government should impose some kind of social policy uh, that encourages the involvements of these youngsters, for instance, in art and music. Yeah, Arza, very nice. Um, I think you had an example coming up there, but you got cut off, not enough space, which is fine. Uh, really nice, Arzus. You're actually saying, like, let's actually force policy. You know, if uh, it's at an unhealthy point in society, then we need to force the change. Yeah, very good. I like these answers. Okay. All right. Um, so communities can inspire youth to uh, real interpersonal relationships by organizing and funding a variety of social events like dance, sports competition, and other fun games. They can bring teenagers and kids together to share in common goals and joys. In my neighborhood, there is an annual cultural festival which does just that. Okay. 
All right, so kind of drawing on some of your answers and um, giving the explanation and the example, okay? Repeat after me. What can society do to encourage young people to socialize with others face-to-face? -face? Communities can inspire youth to real interpersonal relationships by organizing and funding a variety of social events like dance, sports, competitions, and other fun games. They can bring teenagers and kids together to share in common goals and joys. In my neighborhood, there's an annual cultural festival which does just that. Okay. All right. Here we go with the next question. Uh, some people think that pubs and dance clubs are good places to socialize while others feel the opposite. Why is there this difference? All right, so now we're getting into it. Uh, we had this idea come up uh, for part two as well, pubs and dance clubs. So some people think that pubs and dance clubs are good places to socialize while others feel the opposite. Why is there this difference? Okay, let's see what you come up with. Um, Seni Sarani says, dance clubs and pubs are used for socializing, but they are not the best places because most of the people who, play, who visit them tend to act different than usual. They choose to dress up. Yeah, Seni, I think you're on, a, on the right track. Very clever thinking. Yeah, people aren't really their true self at pubs and dance clubs. Absolutely. It's a presented self. Uh, Beck John says the reason for this distinction is the presence of alcohol, which makes people rant, thereby losing the importance of communication. Beck John, nice use of the word rant. Um, I like the answer. It's creative. Okay, and it's a great argument. All right, let's see what else comes up here. I'm curious of your answers. Jiwan Kaur says, well, in my view, it's only due to the mentality of people. Uh, some of the conversations think that it will reduce the moral values in their children, but it's not the same for all. Okay, Jiwan, I think you're getting a bit philosophical. Uh, you have to be careful with uh, getting philosophical in the IELTS interview. That could really lower your score if your listener can't quite understand what you're intending to say so be careful with that okay all right just paul singh says well every person has a different perspective perception according to my point of view this difference is due to the level of education less educated people think it's not good to meet friends in pubs mm, also philosophical okay uh, some questions, students, can be a little bit um, provocative in the aisles, and you have to be careful not to get personally involved. Uh, again, it's not a real conversation. You're not actually there to convince the examiner of your ideas. So be really careful and choose the easy answer, okay? All right. So just Winder Singh says, mm, the um, differentiation between these options is because uh, of the objective opinion, subjective opinion, that some people think it's against their tradition and culture and people could get lost uh, in ancient societal terms mm, getting a lot of philosophical answers here students and it's a little bit tricky to um, figure out exactly what you're referring to so here's another point to get more band marks and not lose marks okay so you must not get into personal philosophical opinion at any point in the interview. You may be asked a question that either provokes or excites you. 
calm yourself. And give the most popular basic answer without getting emotional. Okay? So maybe you own a pub. Maybe you love going to the pub with your friends and you hate people when they say, a oh, pub is just for drunks and losers. What? Um, so yeah, different people have different opinions around this, different cultures as well. The IELTS, eh, not the place to have that debate, especially because the examiner, they're not going to debate. They're just going to kind of nod their head and write their notes and write their marks. Uh, so your goal is not to express your true beliefs. Your goal is to give an answer that's clear, easy to comprehend, and gets you good band scores. Then you can go to the pub after or not and have the debate with people there. Guess what the examiner asked me? The examiner said some people think pubs are terrible places to socialize and then have it out and really get into it. Okay, over a nice cup of cold ale. All right, so uh, the reason for such a debate uh, is likely because of the involvement of alcohol, which can lead to poor behavior as well as it can be quite unhealthy. Furthermore, and this was very clever, I can't remember who said it, but it was really clever. Uh, furthermore, when people go to pubs and dance clubs, they get all dolled up and act different from their usual selves. Uh, they project an identity that they think others will favor. All right. So for these reasons, it may not be the best place to have quality conversation. Okay. Others would say this is subjective and different for each person. All right, there we go. So both sides of the coin, okay? Uh, repeat after me, here we go. Uh, some people think that pubs and dance clubs are good places to socialize while others feel the opposite. Why is there this difference? The reason for such a debate is likely because of the involvement of alcohol, which can lead to poor behavior as well as it can be quite unhealthy. Furthermore, when people go to pubs and dance clubs, they get all dolled up and act differently from their usual selves. They project an identity that they think others will favor. So for these reasons, it may not be the best place to have quality conversation. Others would say this is subjective and different for each person or each patron. Okay, cool. So nice, descriptive, clear, looking at both sides of the coin. I don't know if I could come up with an answer that level right away, but... Of course, here I have an advantage because I'm drawing on your opinions, okay? All right. Now, uh, you're doing a good job. The examiner's feeling confident. The examiner realizes, hey, this guy or this girl can talk. They're not using you, you, you. They're reflecting the grammar of the question. Uh, they are visualizing. They're connecting to their part two answers. Uh, so let me ask him a couple more questions just to make sure that they're absolutely a band nine. And then the examiner will say, uh, let's talk about meeting new people. Uh, what are good ways to start a conversation with a new acquaintance? Okay. Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So what are good ways to start a conversation 
with a new acquaintance. Anybody have a nice answer for that one? Just Paul says, well, it varies from person to person, whether the person is from the same country or foreigner. For foreigners, I would firstly recommend to know the name and after that introduce himself to cultural traditions. Ooh, just Paul, too philosophical. Just keep it simple. Okay, um, simplify, simplify it. It's very philosophical. Don't use the it depends, okay? But it's a great example, and thank you for sharing, Just Paul, because a lot of students do that, okay? Uh, Turk says, uh, can we say they might not project appropriate identity that could attract quality conversation? Yeah, Turk, you could say that for the previous. I know what you're asking. Uh, Bekcan says, the most obvious method to strike up conversation is to talk about the weather. Firstly, since it's a common topic for all people and quite interesting. Yeah, Beck John, very good. Kevin Bui says, a clever approach to kick off a conversation with a stranger is to give that person a genuine compliment, like uh, telling a guy that he is suave and a girl that she looks ravishing. This can create positive first impressions and others are more interested in in getting to know you in person. Yeah, very good, Kevin, very nice. Yeah, complimenting someone is a great way to strike up a conversation. Uh, Just Paul Singh says, well, it varies from person to person, whether the concept, the person is the same country. Okay, Just Paul, we already looked at that. Again, um, don't say it varies. Instead, um, give just a good piece of information that's clear and easy to understand so we can give a lot of good band scores for it. So um, one of the most common ways for people to ignite conversation is to talk about the weather. However, an even better approach, especially if someone is looking for that special person in life is to find the conversation piece. That the person has. like a unique shirt, an expensive watch, or a new hairstyle. It's best to ask a question rather than talk about oneself. All right. Um, so there's uh, my response here, and this is uh, giving you a little bit of psychology. And if there are some uh, viewers out there who are still single and looking for that special someone, here's a little bit about relationship psychology. Everybody has a conversation piece. We all have something like a necklace that we inherited from grandma, a special earring. Uh, we usually have something on our persons that we like others to notice. Okay, this is a common human trait to have something on us that we like other people to notice. So if you can find that what's called a conversation piece on the other person, recognize it and say, hey, what a beautiful necklace. Where did you get that? Oh, I inherited this from my grandmother. She was a lovely woman. Then you are on the right track to meet a new friend. So that's a little bit of wisdom from my own background, from my psychology studies. Okay. So can you give examples? Yes, sure. Uh, like noticing a unique antique necklace on a woman that she inherited from her grandmother and asking, hey, where did you get that beautiful necklace? Okay. 
it looks really old. Okay. All right. So that's a little bit of a tip there for you above and beyond. <laughs> All right. Okay, everyone. So uh, repeat after me. Uh, what are good ways to start a conversation with a new acquaintance? One of the most common ways for people to ignite a conversation is to talk about the weather. However, an even better approach, especially if someone is looking for that special person in life, is to find the conversation piece that the person has, like a unique shirt, an expensive watch, or a new hairstyle. It's best to ask the question rather than talk about oneself. Can you give an example? Uh, yeah, sure, like noticing a unique antique necklace on a woman uh, that she has inherited from her grandmother and asking, hey, where did you get that beautiful necklace? It looks really old. All right, students, that's it for today. I'm going to close on that positive note. Uh, go out there, meet new people. It's one of the greatest parts of being human is socially interacting. I hope that you enjoyed today's lesson. There was a lot of really good uh, conversation back and forth. And if you'd like to continue doing that, you can, of course, go to our websites, uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS, and you'll find some other students and speaking partners for the IELTS there and questions and topics. Um, you are very welcome, Alisher. You're welcome, Turk, Jainil. Uh, great job, everyone. Bye for now. I will be back next week on Wednesday, continuing these live classes at the same time. Uh, Wednesday, we'll start off with speaking part one. For those of you who are writing exams this weekend, I wish you the best of luck. I'll keep my fingers crossed that you get a great score. Signing out from Budapest, I'm Adrian.